Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise Him this evening. I pray that many of you are doing well, that all of you are doing well. <laughs> Amen. That the glory of God is shining upon you, resting upon you, flowing through you, and radiating in your heart and in your life. You know, the one thing I love, love, love about God is that He is with us always. And we know, Scripture tells us, Holy Spirit is with us how long? Forever. Absolute ever. Amen. We are never alone. Sometimes we have to stop, get off the life treadmill, and then just sit there and just, you know, kind of give yourself that hug. I love you, Lord. Thank you, God. God, can you hug me back? <laughs> can you just give me a little squeeze? <laughs> right? You know, what? And, and what's interesting is when you ask God and you sit there in the calm and wait and you ask him, Lord, please slow my mind down. Lord, please slow my life down. Lord God, I just want to stop and be in one moment in time with you. The amazing thing is, is that for you and in you and through you, he makes that happen. That you can experience a moment just with God. And I know he's always there. Amen. And it's just sometimes it's for us to stop and notice and breathe in. But, you know, by and large, we just really have to stop and God, you're God. You're God and you're amazing. Amen. We got to let him be God just in the moment. And that moment, it's amazing how that moment in time becomes eternal. Praise God. I'm Dominique Baptiste. Welcome to Biblical Essentials. I want you to do a few things for me before we continue. I want you to like, share, follow, um, retweet, or subscribe and or subscribe <laughs> whatever you can do to go ahead and connect with this ministry praise God and then to share it with someone else amen thank you so much for for doing that and um, just we just super appreciate you in this giving season amen praise the Lord you know I want to talk tonight about the gift of Jesus Christ so many of us did you know that we can have Christmas every day every single day what is Christmas about? Christmas is about Jesus Christ, the Messiah, being born into the, into the earth realm where he would ultimately grow up and be Lord. I mean, he was born Lord and Savior, but you know, when you're a baby, you got to grow up, right? So, but God sent his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. We can, when we give Christ... To those who are lost, we literally give them Christ Christmas on that particular day. Think about when Christmas was like a big deal to you. <laughs> and I know it's still maybe for a lot of adults, but for some, it's not such a big deal. It's a, you know, in regard to getting gifts and getting presents and finding out new things or seeing who's coming to dinner or just what's for dinner, <laughs> right? So... Think about that. That Christ, that Christmas, that Christ Mass can be someone's special day every day. Because for us, it is about receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord into our lives. Amen. The first Advent is really about when he first appeared on earth. But we are earthen vessels, aren't we? What about when he first appeared into your life? What type of joy did you experience? Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Everyone that I know that has had an experience with Christ remembers their experience with Christ. People don't get saved by happenstance. We get saved and it is a landmark moment in our lives. You know, there's some people out there that haven't had that landmark moment. They haven't had the moment when Jesus Christ is is they receive him as both Lord and Savior. They haven't heard the voice of God calling for them, the Father calling for them. And so when God is using each and every one of us to call people to the Lord, he sent us, he sent his son into this world to save the world, right? Amen. But he sent us into this world to lead other people to him. Do you know that you can give someone your their very own personal Christmas any day of the year. Ours is not, you know, the, the calendar date doesn't celebrate it until December 25th. But today is 
December the 16th. And so if you introduce Christ to someone as, you know, the Messiah is here, when they say, you know, I'm just waiting on God, you know, God, 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 God is going to help me some kind of way. You know, God who? Remember when John ran, when um, the Apostle Paul ran into the, the men who w were praying to the unknown God? That he was still unknown until he showed up. <laughs> it wasn't that God wasn't there. They just did. They's like, we don't know who he is. So we're going to pray to the unknown God until he speaks to us. And then what happened? They began to pray to the unknown God. And God sent someone there to introduce him to them. In their lifetime, they never forgot that day. In their lifetime, they never forgot. For example, when you, when you, I'm sure they never forgot when the Apostle Paul told him about Jesus and the revelation that came into their hearts and souls. The people that were there on the day of Pentecost, they never forgot their Christmas. The day that whole, well, that wasn't Christmas, but they, they never forgot the day the Holy Spirit showed up in their lives. Amen. And for many of them, it was a Christmas because it was the day that Jesus Christ became their Lord and Savior. See, all along, he had been son of God or that man from God or that man gifted by God that was out there doing works. He was out there doing great things. He was telling us more and more about God, things that we had never known. Right. And so now he, he's gone and we've crucified him, you know, and, and now what? And then the apostle Peter says, this same man, Jesus, praise God, is both Lord and Savior. Praise the Lord. And so when he hear, when they hear that, they go, but, you know, we've messed up now and we just don't know what to do. They were at their lowest. They were at their lowest because many of them walked right by Christ in some instances. Many of them had his name on the gossip train in some instances. Many of them were looking and they were still wondering. They were waiting for the next miracle. Well, I've got to see one. You know, I don't believe it till I see it, right? But on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was fully come, those who already believed were filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise God, instantly in the upper room. But those who did not yet know still needed the gospel preached to them. See, Christmasism is called Christ Mass. It's about the celebration of the birth of Christ. It is also about and undeniably about the coming of Jesus Christ into the world for the very first time. And when he comes into this world for the very first time, he comes where? Into your life for the very first time. Do you remember when you heard the word? When you heard the Zion call? When you heard God say, you know, for unto us in the city of, you know, in the state of Texas, in the city of Dallas, you know, on Avenue Row, <laughs> on Avenue Lane, was born, you know, was born again, whatever your name is. That's, that was your Christmas. You know, was born, was, the Messiah was born and presented to this person. That was your day. That was the day when you received Christ as Lord and Savior. That was the day when you were in, you know, Second Baptist Church in, you know, whatever city that you live in and whatever state that you live in. And it was made known unto you that Messiah came just for you. He came to redeem you from your sins. He came to bring you into his presence. He came to set your soul afire so that you could live. He came to forgive your dirty past. Amen. And give you an impeccable infallible future because once we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior condemnation is never ours it may be some conviction God has to clean up some of those bad you know ungodly thinking bad habits amen lifestyle that doesn't reflect him but it does not mean that you're ever going back in that direction again because once Jesus saves you Amen. According to the word of God, I know. Amen. We are still being saved. Amen. So once he starts the process, they believe in me. They receive me as their Lord and Savior. I'm going to clean them up. I'm going to clean them up so that I can present them to myself. What? Without spot or wrinkle. That when I show up, when there's a Zion call, amen, the bridegroom is here. Right? And then the, I'll call them up to myself that day. On that day, they will be made clean and made pure and made whole purely by the blood of Christ and by his work in our lives. 
See, his, he claims us, you know, I, we're saved but we're saved from sin. We're saved from the penalty of sin. But you know, that lifestyle can still be a little dirty. That's why God sent his word. Amen. That's why he washes us in the waters of his word so that we can be made pure. But now think back, think back with me, if you will. When was your Christmas? When did you learn that Messiah had come? When did you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? Did those shepherds who were watching their sheep by night, when they heard, you know, for unto us a child is born, that, that's not what they heard, but that's what Isaiah says. When they heard unto us, when they heard the scripture that says, ha <laughs> there it is right there. That unto us was born in the city of David, amen, a Savior was born. And so they went and they followed, praise God, the star until they found the Messiah. Don't you know that was their day of salvation? That was the day that they began to, that they believed that this baby is the Son of God. This baby is Messiah. How do we know that? Because that's what they went about telling everybody. <laughs> oh yeah, Messiah is here. Messiah is here. Even while he grow, grew up. Can you imagine being one of those people that just knew? Oh yeah, that's Jesus. Yeah. Oh, you know, somebody, some old gossipy hag will be over there saying, oh, yeah, she said she was, that baby is from Jesus, said from God. How does that sound? And then somebody that was out there in the shepherd's field that night say, oh, it's true. It's like you know something no one else knows. See, when we have the power, amen, of God and faith in our lives, you and you're talking to people who don't, you know something they don't know. You know that God is a forgiver. God is a redeemer. God is the one who washes away our sin and makes us whole again. God is the one who, who and I, I love the, the concept of being whole. You know, when you think about whole, you have to think about even though your sins are forgiven, there's a difference between your sins being forgiven, amen, and you being made whole. See, only the Lord can make you whole. I mean, he, can, he will forgive sin. Amen. He will, forgiveness of sin is what brings us into the kingdom. But wholeness comes with relationship and maturity. Wholeness comes with being in his presence. Wholeness comes with God walking, God, God el almost erasing, literally erasing, I would even say, that which is behind you. And then he sets you on a path of that in front of you. And you know how some people, they get saved. And, you know, they still struggle in and out, back and forward. Amen. They're saved. Praise God. Still need some deliverance. You know, saved. I already saved, though. You know, so the Lord is working it out. And they're working out their soul salvation. Praise God. And then you see some others that are almost like miracles. They get saved and they never go back to drugs. They never go back to illicit sex. They never go back to gossip and lying. They never go back to conning and craftiness. None of that. They go forward in the Lord. That person, even though they both received salvation, they both were baptized in the Holy Spirit, but there was a wholeness made in the other person. We don't know what their second decision was, what their second prayer was, what their, you know, I lay it all down was, but we know that they came back a different person. Saved, yes. Both parties, yes but a difference. And the difference is the wholeness that comes with the next level commitment with God. It also comes with thankfulness. When Remember when Jesus prayed, um, told the lepers to go show themselves to the priest and that they would be, you know, and that they Go show yourselves to the priest. So as they went, they were healed. As they went on their way, they were healed. But only one returned, praise God, to say thank you. And when Je he said thank you to Jesus, what? He was made whole. I promise you, if for Christmas, that was the best Christmas he could have ever had. The best first time he met Jesus. The best advent of, you know, first advent of Jesus Christ. The first time he comes into his life, he not only forgives him, but he makes him whole. He not only heals him, but he makes him whole. Just as he made whole the woman at that of God that was um, we had the issue of blood. What a wonderful gift that day. I mean, she had been looking forward to him, I'm sure, at least for three years, because that's how long his ministry was going on, two and a half, probably about that time. And so she says, oh, I can't wait. 
How many of you waited to Christmas Day to give your life to Christ? One of my best friends in college, that was her present for Jesus. She says, I said, what are you getting? What are you, what are you doing for Christmas? She says, oh, I don't really care what I get. She said, I'm getting saved. I said, you get, I said well, you could be saved right now. She said, nope, waiting until Christmas. I said, you're waiting for Christmas? She said, yeah, I'm giving my life to God for Christmas, and he's giving me salvation. And she meant it. <laughs> and she walked it out. And she lived it, and she lives it even until this day. And when you ask her her testimony, her testimony is her freshman year in college, she met the Lord in um, the students, the Baptist Student Union, and she decided then, second semester, that she was giving her life to Jesus, praise God, for Christmas, and he was giving her salvation. <laughs> praise the Lord. If God can do whatever he wants to do, however he wants to do it. The thing is, let's let God use you this Christmas. Why don't you give salvation to someone else? Because, you know, give Jesus to someone else. That's the one thing we do have. That's the one thing you do have. You know you're saved. You receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Hey Amen. You even got armor. Mm. It's got the name of Jesus written down your leg. <laughs> Not only that, you know, you have the shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. You have the girdle of truth, right? Your feet are shy with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You know, all shiny, all polished up. Now, go just clank around in that armor for the holidays. Tell somebody else why you're wearing that armor. When people say, gee, Christmas is just about these gifts and things. You know, you could tell them, you know what Christmas is for me? What? Christmas is honoring the fact that Jesus Christ, the Father, gave his son so that I could have eternal life. That I wouldn't die and be judged and die in my sin, you know, and never to be made whole again. But that I could be restored back to the holy place, back to the new city, back to the presence of God for an eternity. You can have that too and you can stop worrying about these little gifts. And start worrying about the gift that God has given us first. Which is Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Jesus as our Redeemer. Jesus as our Messiah. He is God's greatest gift to each and every one of us. And to show you the wonder of God. Now, you know, the nature of God is he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? He does not change. <laughs> Praise God. And look, I know for those of you who are Trinitarians, amen, and for those of you who understand the oneness of Christ, the oneness of God, in this dispensation and in this time, I want to share something with you. God is all God. The Father gave us the Son. The Son gave us Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit gives us gifts that connect, that enable us and empower us to do the work that God has called us to do. Not only that, Holy Spirit gives us, amen, with a language and a spiritual connectivity that ties us into the very presence of God, even now. Isn't that awesome? That is, that is so wonderful. And God is so mighty and so magnificent in sharing his amazing blessing with each and every one of us. So as you hear the angel speak, for today in the city where you live, <laughs> amen, wherever you are, amen, born unto you is the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord's son, right? And he, he has come, Emmanuel, to save man from their sins. Oh, no, Emmanuel's God is with us. Praise God. And so when we think of Je Jehovah is, um, Josh, Je Jehoshua is to save us from our sins. So when we, when we think about that, we have to give God honor and we have to give him praise. When you're thinking about presents to give people, for Christmas, presents to give them during this holy day season. The best present that you can give them is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news that Jesus has come to save them from their sins. The good news 
that when they pray, God hears them. The good news that they can be healed, praise the Lord, amen, that they can be healed, set free, and, the, and delivered. The good news is that God, the Holy Spirit is always with them and they're never alone. The good news that you don't have, you have a purpose. You are called to be an ambassador in the kingdom. The good news is that the Lord is watching out for them and making ways and blessings for them every step of the way. What a better present than any can anyone have than that. I mean, yes, yeah, nice to get nice things, but things perish. Amen. But the give the love of God, the goodness of God never does. Never does. So we've got to be bold in the Lord, be strong in him, and be thankful that he has given us his holy son. And so we need to go now, give him to others. He said, Go tell. Let's go tell that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, tell it on the valley, tell it on your job, tell it in your driveway, wherever you're going to tell it, including on the World Wide Web. <laughs> Praise God. Go tell it. And watch the Lord reward you for doing the work, amen, for doing the work of the kingdom, for doing the work of one called of him, for looking like his son. When his son came into the world, what, what did he do? He said, I must be about my father's business. And he went right to the temple and started talking up the father. Let me tell you about the father. And he started talking. He said, mm, sounds like he knows him. Who is he? <laughs> right? He's Mary's son. Amen. But not only is he Mary's son, he is God's son. And since he is God's son, amen, he came to redeem all the rest of Mary's children. Praise God. Into the presence of the Father for eternity. Now, you run into somebody who already has who already has received Jesus as Lord and Savior. I mean, you still have another gift to give them. Ask them, have you received? What did the Apostle Paul ask the, um, the children? He said, what have you received Jesus Christ since you believed? And they said, have you received, I'm sorry, the Holy Spirit since you believed? And, and he was like, they had Holy Spirit. We have not heard that there had been such a Holy Spirit, right? <laughs> when you read it in King James, it just reads funny. We have not heard that there had been such a Holy Spirit. And so then he tells he tells each one of them, you know, lift your hands and he prays for them all and they all receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. God has anointed you with the power. Amen. If you have the power, then you have the power to share the power. Let me. It's like we are plugged into a plug in the wall. You know, when you plug a cable into the wall, at the end of that cable, whatever that little cable is, amen, is a connection to the same power that's connected to it. So when a person is being, um, when a person is electrocuted, when a person touches, you know, touches something that is empowered, what happens? If you touch them, you receive what? That same power that's on them. Amen. When we grew up, when we grew up, whenever we would go to my grandfather's house, for whatever reason, my hands were always wet. <laughs> and I was always touching that refrigerator door. He had one of those that you pull the the head the latch down and it kind of unlocks like a real freezer door now. But this was this regular refrigerator. You just pull it down and it would open. The door it was really heavy, so I would always have to grab it like this. And every single time, I mean, it was I don't know what if I forgot or what if I was slipping or tripping. I do not know, but I was always getting shocked by the refrigerator door <laughs> until. I got really shocked, and then I learned. I started. That's when I started tying the, the the dish towel on the refrigerator door, and then pulling it. And they, they, my cousin would ask, "What are you doing?" It's like I'm opening this door, and it's like touch it. I said, "You touch it. <laughs> you touch it. Why? Because it had power. Now, when others touch you, because you have been in the presence of God, because you are now filled with the Holy Spirit, you can turn around and touch others, and they will be filled also." So we can introduce, we can give them the gift of Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We can give individuals the gift of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because when God has filled you, you have the anointing, you have the power to lead others to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and to receive the Holy Spirit. You know, how do some men receive the Holy Spirit? What? By the laying on of hands. Praise God. You know, sometimes I can honestly say sometimes it's power. And sometimes it's just a touch and agreeing in faith. Amen. But the, the point is that the person does receive. 
praise the Lord, it's the Holy Spirit. They are filled. They are set on fire. And usually the person that's praying with them, they're both sitting there just shaking and speaking in tongues. Why? Because the power of God has encapsulated both of them. Keep in mind this, you're never alone. The word of God says where there are two or three gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. See, still more gifting for the good, for, for the holy days of Christmas. Now, a person is saved, they're filled with the Holy Spirit, say, well, they've gotten all of it. No, they haven't. Maybe they need a word of encouragement. Maybe they need someone to touch and agree with them in prayer. Maybe they need someone to hold them in the Lord. Maybe they need, amen, just a reminder that Jesus still loves them. Maybe they need compassion and, and, and forgiveness or to know that nobody's holding that against you. Girl, you better come on here. <laughs> you know, so... I, I love telling people when they tell me about something that they may have done to me or said about me a long time ago that I didn't know anything about. I'm like, so what? Girl, I hadn't thought about Did you really? Is that what you meant? <laughs> Half the time, you know, when people do things and the Holy Spirit is filled in your space or, or you do something to someone and they're all caught up in the Spirit, they don't get it. You don't even get it. It's like, what happened? When was that? Oh, child, ain't nobody thinking about, why, did you mean to do me some harm? You know, I have to check in sometimes. Did you mean to do that to me? Well, how you feel now? <laughs> okay, well, we good. I'm sorry, don't, you know what that was then? This is now. Bought by the blood, saved by the sun, the folks all sing about. Let's keep moving. <laughs> Let's keep moving. Right? And so that's what we have to do. We cannot get caught up in things in the past. I mean, we got to leave them right there under the blood. The only thing that goes fishing for crime, you know, for past sins and, and things that made you cry in the past and all of that is Satan and the accuser of the brethren. If people are bringing up what was left behind you a long time ago, that means they're digging in, they're digging in the sea of forgetfulness. Even God himself put in the sea of forgetfulness. And other people go digging. It's like, why are you digging around in the trash? That's over. Moved on. <laughs> Amen. Come go with me. Let me give you a gift. It's called the gift of mind your business in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. It's called the gift of forgiveness. It's called the gift of, of love. It's called the gift of acting like Christ does. You know, the one thing about Jesus, remember when he prayed for the woman that had the um, that was caught in adultery. What did he tell them when they were done? Amen. He rebuked the men that were standing around just by being God. Just by radiating glory. Radiating love. You know, sometimes you can just radiate glory, radiate love. And then other times, and then, and then you know, there are other times when God tells us, he said, listen, he said, go, sin no more. Don't do this again. Don't. Amen. Just don't. You know, it's not, you're not overtaken by this. Amen. And even when Jesus, the word of God tells us, when we find someone who is overtaken in a fall, what are we supposed to do? Restore such a one. In the spirit of meekness. Amen. He didn't say judge them. He didn't say, um, you know, do whatever. He tells us, be, you know, separate yourself from them. Because it says, it says when you find them in that situation, it's clear. If they could get out, they would. <laughs> you know. He says, what restores such a one in the spirit of meekness. It's important that as we serve God, that we love our brothers and sisters in Christ. Maybe somebody needs restoration. Let's go restore someone today. Amen. You know, they're at home reading their Bible. They're at home praying, but they're not coming out. Why? Because the Christians are out there waiting to get them. Don't let that be their end. Restore them. When they walk in church, say, hey, come sit by me. You know, we know where they've been. We know what they've been doing, or at least they have an idea, you know, and they come in with that I'm guilty look on their face. Come on down. Restore such a one. Someone sitting in service wants to walk to the altar but doesn't want to walk by themselves. Ask them, do you want me to walk down there with you? Let's go. And they say, well, yeah. I say, come on, walk with me. <laughs> walk with me. <laughs> just take it on yourself. Walk with me. <laughs> we'll both go. <laughs> right? And watch God just do an a miraculous work in them. See, there are many, many gifts that we can give in this season. Even though, you know, it's the season of, it's a season that is, 
is, is celebrated and created by God himself, by the Father himself giving the Son, and the Son giving forgiveness, amen, and redemption, and then even giving us Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit giving us all these gifts to operate in, in the Spirit, and to reach others for God, and then to perfect us also, so that he can present us back to himself as a gift, a bride, without spot, without wrinkle. It's a circle. Isn't God amazing? Isn't he amazing? He is so wonderful. Well, listen, guys, I love you tonight. I pray that something that I've said tonight, something that the Lord has said through me, has impacted your heart to give. Amen. Freely have you have give. Freely have you received. Freely give. Let the glory of God rest upon you and, and pour through you. Praise God. Amen. We love you in the Lord. I'm Dominique Baptiste. Many blessings to you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Amen. Now, let's um, let's pray. Father God, we love you and we thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you for the gift of life and that more abundantly. We thank you for every good and perfect gift which comes from you, especially that of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Amen. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, amen, who is always with us. Amen. Who brings us closer to you and teaches us and leads us into the abundant life. We say thank you. We just honor you and we praise you and we lift you up. Dear Lord God, you are mighty, you are holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with your glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Great and wonderful is your name, O oh God. Great and wonderful. Lord, let praise be in our hearts. Let it be upon our lips. God, let us lead, let us give people the gift that keeps on giving. The gift of salvation, amen, the gift of an introduction to Christ, the gift of the Holy Spirit, amen, and even gifts and encouragement along the way. We thank you. And we don't take these empowerments that you've given us for granted to grant gifts into the lives of others. We give you praise and we give you honor and we just say thank you. Amen. Amen. Now, guys, remember this. Friday is Free Stuff Friday. That means that you get to give something away. I don't care if you're a business, if you're a ministry, if you're an individual. Just give something away and then t tell us about it and tag it. Free Stuff Friday. That's going to be a part of our ministry um, moving forward. We're going to keep it. Free Stuff Friday, we're going to build it out. Um, and it's not going to be just during, the, during this holiday season. We're going to pop up with Free Stuff Friday every now and again. And watch God just do some amazing things. Because I know that as I sow my free stuff, my free stuff is good stuff. And so <laughs> you guys have some good stuff to give. Whether it is a lot of good stuff or one good stuff. It's still good stuff. And we're going to sow it into the lives of people. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And to thank you. Thank you so much into the lives of someone else and give. I also ask that you share our Free Stuff Friday and just see, let's just see what happens on the 20th. Praise God. Many blessings to each and every one of you. Have a blessed evening and have a good, good night. God bless.